All right, before we go guns blazing into Python and program our factorial function, let's make sure we understand what the factorial function is. Now, we could just use the factorial function that is part of the Python math package, but you know, it's a great exercise to code this stuff by hand. All right, so what does factorial do? Well, the factorial notation is just an exclamation point, like this is five factorial, and in this context, the exclamation point is actually called a bang symbol. And what this equals, if we have a number factorial, it's simply the product of all positive integers from the given number, so five, all the way down to one, as in five times four times three times two times one, which you may be able to calculate is let's see 20 60 120 that's what this is equal to the one at the end doesn't really do anything but you know it's cute to include it so that's what the factorial is now if you're interested in recursion we're going to program this recursively in the next video i'll leave a link to that in the description but another basic way that we can write this function as you can tell based on how it works and i'll write it again just generically n factorial is equal to n times n minus minus one and so on all the way to two and then finally one. We will be able to program this simply using a for loop and we'll put in a number n and we'll have to loop over all numbers from one up to n, multiply them together. That's our factorial. Let's get to it. Now that we understand how the factorial function works, programming it in Python will be a breeze. From the definition, we know that to calculate n factorial, we're going to need to loop through the positive integers from 1 up to n. So you should be thinking about the range function in Python, which produces a nice sequence of integers for us to use. So let's jump in here and just check the range function, make sure it's going to work like we think. So I might just type for i in range of 10, for example. If I was trying to calculate 10 factorial, I might need something like this. And then I'll just say print i. This way I'm just seeing how the range function works and making sure that it's going to work all right when I program the factorial function. And here we can see that the range function gives us 0 through 9, which is almost what we need, but not quite. If we're trying to calculate 10 factorial, we need to take 1 through 10 and multiply all those together. Here we're getting 0 through 9, so in effect we just need to bump all of those up by 1. So long story short, the range function, that's going to work, we'll loop through that, we'll just need to make sure that we bump the i up by 1 so that we're getting 1 through n when we go to calculate n factorial. Let's go ahead and define the function. We will just call it factorial and the input parameter will be n. n represents natural numbers, which is a good choice because that's what the factorial function works with. Now we know this function, it's calculating factorials. So for sure it's going to return a number. So we can go ahead and put that at the end. Our function will have to return some number. Let's go ahead and call that number factorial. It's a little long, but you know, why not? I like to be specific. So our function will return this factorial variable. The actual job of the function will be to calculate what that variable needs to be. We of course will need to initialize the variable with some value. So we'll say factorial equals something. What should we set it equal to? Well, the factorial function is all about multiplication. So we should probably initialize the factorial as the multiplicative identity, as in one. If this was a function all about addition, we'd probably initialize it to zero. One is also a good choice because zero factorial is equal to one. So it makes sense to start the variable as being equal to one. Literally, the only thing left is to get that for loop that uses the range function. The factorial variable is starting at one. And then if I want to calculate, for example, five factorial, I'm just going to use this for loop to multiply the factorial variable by one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll be done. So I'll say for I in range n, since n is the input variable here, we're going to take the variable factorial, I misspelled it there, let me try again, 
we'll take the factorial variable and we can write times equals. This means whatever number is stored in the factorial variable will be multiplied by whatever's on the other side of this equation. And I'm gonna put not i, but i plus one. So now this factorial variable, which starts as one, will be multiplied by one, two, three, four, all the way up to n, and we're pretty much done. All right, let's go ahead and try it. So I'll say print factorial of, and what should we start with? Well, it's always a good idea to check your edge cases, so let's put zero in this bad boy and make sure that we get the right result. Running the program, we see that we get an output of one, which is just right. In this case, what's happening is the factorial variable starts off as one, and then when zero gets put into this range function, that actually produces an empty sequence. So nothing happens here, and the function just returns one, which is then printed out. We could of course try a more interesting value, like five, and if you've worked with factorials a lot, you know five factorial is 120. It's working just fine. We can also use a quick for loop to check a bunch of values of our function, and all of these look good. I know factorials like the back of my hand, and those all look like familiar numbers to me. I could, of course, cross-reference them with another website or my own calculator if I felt so compelled. So the function works, pretty simple. It doesn't necessarily need any big revisions, but the factorial function is a pretty nice one to practice programming with recursion. If you haven't programmed a recursive function before, the factorial function is a very straightforward one to write using recursion. So give that a try. Write a program that calculates factorials using recursion, and we'll go over how to do that in the next video.